Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So this is gonna be my April online income report. So again, I've put timestamps in the description if you wanna just skip to whichever bit you're interested in. And before we start, I just wanted to let you know, I am writing up these online income reports every month on my website, singlemumsuccessclub.com, which I'll link down below as well. And I set up a mailing list to be able to mail it out to people if they're interested. And I was really shocked when I looked at it, how many people have signed up for it. Like, I, I thought it'd be like one or two people. <laughs> but when I check, there's like hundreds of people. So thank you very much for that. And I'm really sorry that I haven't even sent anything out yet, I don't think. But don't worry, I'm not gonna spam you with stuff. I literally just send out um, my income report for that month. And I think it's mainly people that have started match betting. They like to see, you know, actual numbers and stuff every month. It can be really helpful. And eBay people as well, because when you first started on eBay, I remember, you know, looking at some of the big eBay YouTubers and their numbers seem mind blowing. Uh, you hear a lot about the 90 day or 30 day number. I can't think of the word, total, the 90 day total. But that actually means nothing at all because if you're spending more than that, like on stock or something, then you're actually losing money. So that number is like pretty irrelevant. That's why I don't really talk about that number because it, it doesn't mean anything. The only numbers that really matter is profit. Like how much you actually make in every month. And even though my numbers are not exciting, <laughs> my numbers aren't exciting. They're not really like clickbait worthy or anything, um, but they are doable. So I think that's more helpful because it shows like what really you could do. And I do it in such a small amount of time that anyone could do it. Anyway, with that being said, let's get into it. So we'll start with eBay. So going back to April, eBay was pretty good for me. I was still doing a lot of auctions, starting at two pound on a lot of older stuff. So a lot of that sold this month, which is really good because I kept getting it in my head that I wanted to get up to a thousand listings. But then when I was thinking about it, I was like, no, because the most important thing is how much you're selling, you know, so how much money you've got rolling in. So having a high number of listings, all that means is like more money put into it and more money for storage. So actually I'm trying to get rid of the more not great stuff, <laughs> the more, you know, generic clothes, get rid of all them and focus on bringing in stuff that's going to sell quicker. Because I saw someone put it somewhere and I thought it was a really cool little saying and it was, that they want to be in the selling game, not the storage game. And when I heard that, I was like, yes, I want to sell the stuff, not store the stuff. So that's kind of made me change my mind on some things. So now I'm not focusing on getting to a specific listing number, but I want to increase the amount I'm selling per day. So yeah, with the two pound auctions, I sold a total of 97 items in April and the sales came to £1,504.09. pence. So I sold £300 more in April than I did in March, which is really cool. But obviously a lot of them were these £2 items where you're making like, I don't know, I think I put £3.50 postage on, so you're making like a pound on each item or something. But after actual fees and postage and stuff, that profit number from eBay came to £1,019 for April which I was super pleased with. Okay, Etsy. In April, again, I didn't do hardly anything on Etsy. I think I probably cross-listed like two items or something. I did nothing, so I can't expect, I can't expect anything good to come from Etsy when I'm literally not even logging into it. But I still sold two items that had been listed there for a few months, and that came to a total of 57 pounds. However, I did have a return, and obviously they got refunded. So my total profit came to £26.60, which is actually really good because that was for one skirt, so I'm not complaining. Okay, next is my vintage clothing website called emlyvintage.com, and I'm really not expecting to make great or any sales on this at all at the minute because I literally have about 15 items listed on there or something. It's something that I'm going to be building slowly in the background when I've got time it's not something that i'm putting a lot of time into so i can't i don't expect anything from it at the minute i just want it to slowly build in the background but i have noticed that the traffic has been increasing so i'm guessing that's probably from youtube so that's really cool i get a notification on my phone every time i get a visitor on the site and it comes up and tells me where they're from like what country 
And there's been people from like all over the place, Italy, Australia. Um, so that's really exciting that people are actually finding it. Now, obviously I don't have a lot on there, so I can't, I'm not going to make a lot of sales, but just knowing that people are going to it and finding it, however they're finding it, is a really good sign and kind of proves that, because traffic is everything. You know, if you can get the traffic there and you actually have the stuff that they want to buy in their size and stuff, then you're winning. But I don't have enough um, I just don't have enough listings on there at the minute. But I've started a blog on there as well, which I do have some posts for, but they're not published on there yet. And um, that's just something I'm, again, just slowly building in the background um, and just thinking more long-term with that. But I still made one sale. That is to somebody I know though, so I don't know if that really counts, but I, yeah, I'm counting it. And that was a profit of 18 pound. The next is Google Ads. And I started to get like really excited about Google Ads because from like last April to February, the graph, I'll put a picture of it here so you can see it, the graph was just going up and up and up like this. And I was like, oh my God, like it's gonna just keep going up and up and up. But then I took like two weeks off and it crashed. <laughs> um, so I think that's the thing with YouTube. If you don't, if you're not posting regularly and blah, 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 it, do, it goes crazy up and down anyway. Uh, I think in March, I think it was about 330 pounds I got from Google ads. And in April, I got 291. But so it's, it's like a 40 pound drop, but I already know the next one is going to be even lower uh, because I've taken even more time off um, due to losing my brother and stuff like that. So again, I know that's gonna that's gonna be way low down as well. Okay, on the same note, next is affiliate marketing income. And this is all related to YouTube and my website and everything like that. It's the links in the description and stuff like that, the stuff that I promote and talk about. And with not doing as much on YouTube and not doing as much in general, um, this has also fallen. For the month of April, this came to £1,437, which is still mind-blowing to me, but this is £600 down from March. So you can see how much that really does go up and down, and I think this month it's going to be even less, I think. But we'll see, I'm not sure. But that is one of them, it's one of them things that's so cool when you get it, but you can't rely on it because it, it can just... One month could just be like £20 and another month could be £2,000. So you really can't rely on it. Kind of like YouTube. All right, match betting. So again, I haven't done much with match betting, just like with everything else. I've had so much time off everything. I think um, even before, before losing my brother even, I think I was just really burnt out. I think I was just trying to do everything and make everything work. I think I've just learned you just, you can't do everything at the same time. Um, so what I've decided to do with match betting going forward, before what I wanted to do was just try and make as much as I possibly could and then show you guys like what's possible with it. But I can't do that with everything else. Like I just can't keep it going. I just like end up resenting things. Like even on eBay, I ended up just absolutely resenting listing. Like I, I did not want to do it at all. And of course, you know, if you don't list stuff, you're not going to sell stuff, so it's not good. That's kind of where I got with match betting. I was starting to, like, resent it because I've made this commitment that, like, I wanted to do it. But I'm, like, one of them people, if someone tells me what to do or I feel like, feel like pressure, like someone's expecting me to do something, I'm just, like, I want to do the opposite. It's, like, really childish, but that's just how I am. So I thought instead of doing that, uh, I think I spoke about in my last, last match betting video about the thread that I found on the Profit Accumulator forum, which was the how to make £300 a month part-time. So, whereas I was going by the how to make £1,000 a month thread and getting like all about it, I thought, right, I, I know I can make £300 a month with match betting pretty easily. Uh, so I'm just gonna stick with that and make that my goal of £300 a month extra, tax-free, can't complain about that. That's going to be my goal for now. So this month I made doo -doo -doo, £277 and 28 pence with match betting. And that brings my total for 2021 so far up to £1,125 and 98 pence. Which I know may not sound like so exciting, but it's just free money. 
awesome. All right, swag books, which is what I got, um, what do you call it, restricted for on YouTube for linking swag books. So I will be linking it, but if you want to go to it, go to it. But swag books, I love swag books. You're never going to get rich from swag books, of course. Um, but the way I use it now, I don't fill out any surveys or anything like that on there. Uh, I've, now that I have other ways to make money, I can make more doing something else. Uh, but it is awesome for people that are starting out to make money online. And I'll still always use it, but I use it in a more passive way. So I use, there's a Chrome extension um, that basically just, if you're on a website, um, it pops up and will tell you like the percentage of cash, cash back you can get from there. And I always have a look, if I'm going to use cashback, I have a look at top cashback and swag books, see which one's higher because some are better on one or some are better than the other. And I also use the swag book swag books search so like instead of the google search on my computer all these little things really do add up it's things that take like no effort and i just wait until i've got 1400 i think it's 1400 now it used to be a bit more than that but 1400 swag books will get you a 10 pound paypal voucher which just puts 10 pounds straight into your paypal account i found that that's the best value you can get a five pound you can get a five pound voucher but I think the £10, I worked it out and the £10 is a lot better. So this month I made £10 from Swagbooks. So as you can see, it's not life-changing life changing amounts, but it does add up over the course of a year. And then Prolific, uh, I think I've spoken about Prolific.co before, and it's just it's just the best. I know people hate, like, uh, a lot of people hate the survey sites of filling surveys in for, like, pennies, and that is not what Prolific is at all. It's basically a site where you can take part in proper research. You can be a participant in research that are, it's being conducted at universities. It's usually psychological research and like consumer research and that kind of thing. But it's really actually interesting. It's not just filling these questions. Sometimes it is, but sometimes like, you'll have to do like little games and all kinds of stuff. But the best thing about it is I've just took a screenshot I took a screenshot of, of the studies that it shows available and it will show you how much you get paid for that study and how much time it takes. In my experience, it, it doesn't take as much time as it says on there, but you do get that money pretty much straight away as soon as they receive your thing. Sometimes they'll check it, see if you've done it properly and everything, and you do just get that money straight away. I think you just need five pounds to cash out but as you can see some of these studies are more than five pounds so you can make a really good amount on prolific the thing with it is is you you never get timed out you know like on some survey sites you'll fill in a few questions and then it's like oh you don't qualify for this well with prolific you fill out you when you sign up to it you fill out all about yourself first so it it only shows studies that you actually qualify for so you don't ever get screened out or anything like you don't waste your time in that way so it is actually like worth your time to do and even though when i took this screenshot yesterday it shows all those studies a lot of the time you'll go on it and there'll be no studies available but now they have just brought out a new chrome extension and if you have your if you have your speakers on loud it's it scares me to death because it's like this woman's robotic voice that'll say new studies available i'm prolific and it's it terrifies you. If, you if you're on your own in the house and that just screams out of your speakers it's pretty scary uh, but that'll pop up and if you're on the computer you can just click it and go straight to the study so it's going to depend on your demographic and your lifestyle and stuff it's going to depend on how many studies you have available i think i'm in like a really good category uh, because i'm a parent i'm a student i'm self-employed and there seems to be a lot of research around these areas, especially with COVID and stuff. You know, there was a lot of studies around homeschooling and mental health, children's mental health. So it was super interesting. Um, and yeah, and if you if you like that kind of stuff, if you're into psychology and stuff anyway, then it's cool to be able to be a part of something like that and get paid for it. So in April, I really didn't go on it much. I always think every month I'm going to do more and more and more. Um, I have made more in May. I think than in April and um, but in April I made 20 pounds and 56 pence all right so that's everything in April there was no top cash back or anything like that this month so the total for everything came to 3114 pence 
Now that sounds like really epic, but you have to take into account that I pay for a storage unit, um, other expenses, you know, like subscriptions and stock and stuff like that. Um, I didn't spend as much on stock in April than I did in March, so that definitely helped things. My real, real profit after after taking off all the, even just petrol and stuff like that, my real profit was £2,427. I was going to say pence. £2,427. So that was £260 less than in March. Uh, but I took like two weeks off, so can't complain about that. I really was hoping to document like the amount of hours I spend on each thing, like how many hours I spend on eBay per week, to be able to figure out like where is best to put my time, because I feel like I waste so much time just thinking like, what should I do today? Should I write a blog post? Should I make a video? Should I do some listings? I never know what's best to do and I end up just wasting so much time thinking about it. So I'm really going to try and document how much time I spend on each, then I can kind of make like a per hour amount. Maybe something's going to be dropped, maybe something should be added, I don't know. But without knowing how much time I actually spend on stuff, and I've got a feeling that it's going to be less than I think it is. I think I'm constantly doing stuff, but when I really look at what I do every day, so much of it is wasted. So much of it is wasted on just like thinking about what I should do. <laughs> so stupid. Look, before making this video, I was like, should I make this video? I don't know. Should I do it tomorrow? Maybe I should do the washing right now. Oh, I need to hoover the living room. And it, I, I wasted like an hour when I could have done this whole thing. But it'll be interesting to know. So I hope that was interesting. And let me know, anyone, any of you match betters or people who do prolific, let me know in the comments how much you made. And if you'd like the monthly income report updates, then I'll put a link down below to sign up for my newsletter. So you can look forward to that <laughs> every month. But thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video.